Afghanistan's few remaining trees are rapidly being harvested to fuel the cooking fires of its 32 million inhabitants, more than 90% of whom live at a subsistence level in rural communities. Since women in rural Afghanistan do not go out in public, it is their children who must gather firewood. Each day around the country, young boys and girls leave their villages to gather brush and small trees, which they must bring home for their mother's cooking fires. They compete with commercial fuel vendors and with nomads for Afghanistan's scarce brush and ground cover, all of which should be left in the ground to hold down and replenish topsoil. The cumulative removal of ground cover for cooking fuel is turning more of this country into barren desert every year. These young children who should be in school face the daily dangers of landmines, attack, and kidnapping. Their mothers, exposed every day to smoky cooking fires, face increased risk of respiratory disease. All of this environmental destruction takes place in a country where the sun shines more than 300 days each year. One way to significantly reduce the amount of firewood needed by Afghans is to create thousands of green energy jobs, including the building and selling of simple solar cookers and solar food processors. These devices offer the Afghan people an inexpensive way to tap into their most abundant source of energy, the sun. After the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan, the British-run Serve Solar Project taught Afghan refugees in Peshawar, Pakistan, how to build simple solar box cookers to cope with serious fuel shortages in the camps. When Serve returned to Afghanistan in the 1990s, they set up a workshop in Jalalabad, where they taught local carpenters how to build solar box cookers until they and other NGOs were forced to leave the country during the Taliban era. These simple wood and glass boxes, which reached temperatures above 300 degrees Fahrenheit, 150 degrees centigrade, were used to cook rice, vegetables, and meat, and bake breads and cakes. When cooking meat, vegetables, or fruit with a solar box cooker, no water is needed because the food cooks slowly and evenly and steams in its own juices. Only rice, lentils, and beans require additional water. After Taliban rule ended in 2001, solar cooking was revived in Afghanistan by Grace Magney and her late husband Gordon. Working with Global Hope Network in Kabul, Gordon and Grace began in 2002 to introduce a new box cooker developed by an American NGO, the Solar Oven Society. This solar oven, called the Sport, is made of recycled soda bottles with mylar reflectors. Several thousand solar sports have been assembled and distributed in Afghanistan. Training has been conducted by Grace Magney. The Villager is a large hybrid solar box cooker produced by Sun Ovens International of Illinois. One is used by a green chef to prepare meals for celebrity events in Hollywood. Five others have been sent by Rotary International to Afghanistan to use as village bakeries and at schools. Unleavened Afghan bread is easily produced in the villager, which can bake several hundred loaves each day. The villager also has a propane gas backup for continuous use on cloudy days. Solar cookers being used in Afghanistan come in many shapes and sizes. Sabur Akhtari, an Afghan mechanical engineer who now lives in Germany, spends several months each year in Afghanistan supervising renewable energy projects. He has designed a variety of solar and wind generating devices for use in Afghanistan. At Engineer Akhtari's Afghan Solar Bedmash Center for Renewable Energy in Wardak Province, workers are able to produce 1,000 jars of marmalade per month using only solar thermal energy. In 2008, Mr. Akhtari worked with personnel at provincial reconstruction teams in Logar and Parwan provinces to teach Afghan farmers to build and use solar food dryers. He has also trained farmers in Kunduz province to use these devices with funding from the German government. And, uh, we have uh, built over there uh, about 42 pieces of these uh, tunnel uh, dryers and two projects we had with PRT, with PRT Logar and with PRT Charikar. Uh, and we have uh, produced uh, 20 solar dryers and made uh, training for uh, farmers, uh, local farmers, how to dry uh, their, uh, their products, uh, vegetables and uh, fruits. 
Mr. Akhtari is also teaching Afghans how to build and use Scheffler reflectors, large, locally built solar thermal devices that were invented by Dr. Wolfgang Scheffler of Austria. The Scheffler reflector is a parabolic mirror that focuses the light of the sun on a narrow point several meters from the mirror. The concentrated sunshine at the focal point can be used to heat a large cooking pot for boiling and frying. It can also heat an oven for baking or a surface for making local breads. The Scheffler reflector permits indoor and outdoor cooking. Akhtari and his Afghan engineers are also experimenting with the construction of a parabolic tandoor oven, which can bake naan bread in a traditional clay oven heated with concentrated solar power rather than by a wood fire. The Scheffler reflectors at Akhtari's solar bedmash center are used to train new builders who can carry this technology to other parts of the country. One advantage of parabolic solar thermal devices like the Scheffler and other family size models used in Afghanistan is that they work in hot or cold weather, very cold weather, as long as there is sunshine. You can even boil a pot of water on Mount Everest with a parabolic solar cooker. Large-scale Scheffler reflector systems in neighboring India are used to generate steam for modern kitchens used by the Indian Army in remote mountain outposts. Other rooftop Scheffler reflector systems, built by Gaudiya Solar for religious and educational institutes in India, provide the steam to cook for tens of thousands of people every day. Afghanistan has the perfect climate for this technology. The cardboard and aluminum foil solar cook it has been introduced into a number of Afghan villages where village men even discuss saving the foil from their cigarette wrappers to build their own solar cookers. This simple device can cook a pot of meat, rice, or chicken in just a few hours. Tens of thousands of cookets are being used by Darfur refugees to cook food and pasteurize water using the free light of the sun in the middle of the desert. Today, Afghans are building concrete parabolic solar cookers that resemble the butterfly solar cookers used by thousands of rural Chinese, South Asian, and African families. Afghan women can use regular cooking pots with their parabolic solar cookers to make stews, roasts, and to bake. They can also use pressure cookers to save even more fuel. Another advantage of parabolic solar cookers is that when it's sunny, which is most of the year, in Africa as well as in Afghanistan, these devices can keep water boiling all day long. This can save village tea shop owners hundreds of kilos of wood and charcoal every week. This locally built concrete mold can be used to produce hundreds of reinforced concrete parabolic solar cookers for home use in rural Afghanistan, where fuel shortages are most critical. To make the dish, Afghan craftsmen apply concrete reinforced with wire rebar over the plastic-covered mold. The men add reflective tape to the finished dish and give it the final test, which shows that the focal point where the cooking pot will sit can reach temperatures above 450 degrees Fahrenheit or 230 degrees Celsius. Success! The people of Afghanistan should be using their most abundant clean energy resource, the sun, for cooking and boiling water, to save their environment, and to allow their children to attend school instead of spending their days gathering fuel.